Hi, I'm Jen, and welcome to Christian Fire Poppy. I have some pretty cool things to share with you guys. First of all, happy Eclipse Day. It is April 8th, 2024. And I just wanted to share with you guys, there was another Zion Channel Challenge Day miracle. So great job, you guys. Everybody who participated, wonderful. I absolutely know that the Lord is aware of our minds and our hearts and our efforts. And I'm sure I get a lot of things wrong and I'm not perfect, but I do know that the Lord is in these challenges and he is pleased when we make efforts. And so it was actually really amazing. So on our previous channel challenge days, I have seen rainbows and taken pictures for you guys. And today, as the clock rolled past midnight on April 8th, so on the final day of the Read the Book of Mormon challenge, on April 8th, I saw this. So look over here. So this was where I issued the challenge was this video that was called This is the Generation, the Second Coming. And you know what? I had actually prayed to reach 88,000 people and it did. It hit 88,000 exactly on April 8th. So I took a screenshot of it. I looked at it. It was just past midnight. It had just turned April 8th. And this is actually the first second that I had checked past midnight. I had checked it earlier in the day on April 7th. It was not quite at 88,000. And so there you go. That is a huge miracle, you guys. So I've talked a lot on this channel how numbers are symbols, and God uses symbols to speak to us at times. So this is the challenge up here. If you remember it from my previous videos, I first issued it on this video, and 888 is my special number. It is the number that I put on my Gmail, and 8 is a symbol for new life, a new day, the millennium, and Jesus Christ. I love all the 8 numbers, but particularly 888. That is commonly known as the Gematria, the number for Jesus or Christ, the Redeemer. And I thought this was just a really cool miracle. I know that God did this not just for me, but for all of you. One of the goals in this challenge is to do Zion Channel challenges. And we work together and we participate. And I love that he's giving me these little signs and wonders that I can share with you guys. Because honestly, some of the great signs and wonders that I receive in my daily life are the impressions of the Spirit feelings, the love. I can't quite share that with you. I can try to express it in words, but how merciful of the Lord to give me something visual that I can share with you guys. So the first great American eclipse marked the prophet President Monson's 90th birthday. At that time, there was a general conference and Elder Gary Stevenson, I'm really liking what Elder Stevenson is saying these days. He talked about this eclipse and he made the connection that on August 21st, there were two big events, the solar eclipse and the 90th birthday of our beloved prophet. So at that time, President Monson had asked for a birthday gift. He said, find someone having a hard time, ill or lonely, and do something for them. And now today, the second great American eclipse, it marked the prophet President Nelson's and President Oaks's 40th anniversary of being sustained as apostles. So you can see here in the BYU News, it says President Nelson attends um, Sunday afternoon session. At the beginning of his remarks, President Nelson noted that April 7th, this was the day before the eclipse, part of the general conference eclipse, marks the 40th anniversary of when he and President Oaks were sustained. So there you go, our big prophet marks in the sky. And thank you to Melinda, who sent this really awesome picture. Apparently, a big spot to go and watch the eclipse was in Russellville, Arizona. <laughs> so, Russellville, that would be a great place to celebrate the eclipse and the 40th anniversary of living prophets and apostles on the earth. Awesome. Um, I got another email, and thank you so much to Akiko from Oregon. And this was a really interesting insight. So I had already noticed, I've been taking note of how frequently the prophet and apostles are mentioning Nephi 14.14. 14. They have talked about it a few times, and I don't have the printed general conference talks to say exactly how often this is happening, but I know I heard it in this general conference and in previous ones multiple times. But if we look at 
14, 14. So I have a little scripture chiasmus. It spans 1, 14 scriptures from the Bible, the Book of Mormon, the Doctrine and Covenants, and Moses. So all four of our scriptural books in Genesis 1, 14, we have God made marvelous signs in the heavens. And God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And then in 1 Nephi 1, 14, we have signs cause the righteous to glorify God. And it came to pass that when my father had read and seen many great and marvelous things, he did exclaim many things unto the Lord, such as, Great and marvelous are thy works, O Lord God Almighty. Thy throne is high in the heavens, and thy power and goodness and mercy are over all the inhabitants of the earth. And because thou art merciful, thou wilt not suffer those who come unto thee that they shall perish. And then our center of the chiasmus, 1 Nephi 14, 14, what happens to the righteous after signs given? And it came to pass that I, Nephi, beheld the power of the Lamb of God, that it descended upon the saints of the church of the Lamb, and upon the covenant people of the Lord, who were scattered upon all the face of the earth. And they were armed with righteousness and with the power of God in great glory. Now, Doctrine and Covenants 114, see all our 14s, what happens to the unrighteous after signs given? So, the arm of the Lord shall be revealed, and the day cometh that they who will not hear the voice of the Lord, neither the voice of his servants, neither give heed to the words of the prophets and apostles, shall be cut off from among the people. So more important than ever to listen to their words at this last general conference. We have so many signs going along with it. Moses 1.14. So what the glory means for the righteous. For behold, I could not look upon God except his glory should come upon me, and I were transfigured before him. All right, so these are all of our 14s. So Akiko sent this to me, and I mentioned her, but I found it interesting because the number 14 is linked to deliverance and salvation. In Hebrew, it can be a symbol for deliverance and salvation. And in Nephi 14:14, 14, 14, this scripture is sandwiched by troubles and the need for deliverance. You notice on either side of Nephi 14:14, 14, 14, it says in verse 13, I beheld the great mother of abominations did gather together multitudes upon the face of all the earth among all the nations of the Gentiles to fight against the Lamb of God. And 15, I beheld the wrath of God was poured out upon that great and abominable church. There were wars and rumors of wars among all the nations and kindreds of the earth. So, I wanted to give you guys just a little highlight and inspiration from our talks at General Conference, and I'm leading into something else. So just a quick review. If you saw this on the other video, Elder Stevenson gave a great bridge parable talk. He said, when you pass over a majestic suspension bridge, I invite you to remember the two great commandments. May your hearts and minds be lifted upward. He mentioned the Baltimore Bridge incident, the Golden Gate Twin Towers that hold up the bridge, and the great commandment lesson to the Pharisees to love God and love thy neighbor. So this is part of the Holy Week Tuesday, also called Fig Tuesday lesson. He even directly said that this was a lesson from what we call Holy Week. So the first bridge he mentioned and showed a picture of was the Rainbow Bridge. I originally saw this event because of the situation on the Rainbow Bridge, the Peace Bridge is closed as a sign, a sign to the covenant people of events that were coming. So the Ponds Brook Comet becomes its brightest and it is at per perihelion, which is means it's closest to the sun at that point at the start of Passover. So right before Passover begins on April 21st, we have this interesting sign in the sky. And it's interesting because ponds means bridge, brooks means water. So the ponds is actually 
um, a knob-like structure in the central portion of the brainstem between the midbrain and the medulla. Any messages descending from the brain or ascending must cross this critical bridge-like structure. So this reminds me of what Elder Stevenson told us. We need to connect our brains and our love of God to our action to love our neighbor. And also on April 21st, the Manti Temple will be dedicated. This is all right before Passover. Now, I have a friend at Last Day's Temporal and Spiritual Preparedness, and he sent this to me. He said, check out what is happening in the heavens on Passover. So I took a look and Passover begins on April 22nd. So I pulled up from Israel's perspective on April 22nd at 22, 22, 22. The moon perfectly intersects the spike of wheat in the woman Virgo's hand as Passover day begins at sundown from Israel's perspective. So let me show you guys live really fast so you can see how amazing this is. The moon actually moves very, very quickly. So for it to be this precise at this moment is quite fascinating and compelling. Let's take a look. So here we go. You can see moon and spica at this exact moment, but could we just move to a different day? Watch how quickly the moon moves away. So look at that. It's there. I mean, if we just change times, let's go back to the lost side of it. Type in moon. Let's watch how the moon travels. Check this out. So the hours pass. The moon moves really fast from hour to hour. So you watch as it travels from day to day. It goes all over the heavens. All right, so we are going to be doing a Passover challenge that is extended through April 21st. Passover begins on the 22nd, and our Passover challenge has to do with the two great commandments and prayer. These were big topics from Elder Stevenson, Elder Holland, and even harking back to President Monson's birthday wish at the first eclipse. So what we are going to do over the next, let's see, short of two weeks, pray powerful prayers, repent, help for America and Israel and people in need, two, praise and worship God, and three, do an act of service. So we have our prayer, our first commandment, and our second commandment. But that's not it, because 40 days from the eclipse is Pentecost Day. And Pentecost challenge is closely linked to the Kirtland Temple, what President Nelson told us to do, to study and gather Israel. So we are going to, one, pray powerful prayers that the blessings of the Kirtland Temple dedication may come to pass. Two, study Doctrine and Covenants 109 and the Kirtland Temple history. And three, Gather Israel daily by doing family history, temple work, and missionary work. So remember, temples are more than physical constructions. Their history is interwoven with the struggles and motivations of their builders. The uncommon sacrifices of the Latter-day Saints were preludes to a powerful Pentecostal season that began with the Kirtland Temple. So we hope to see a season of similar magnitude, wonder, and glory, and blessings from the Lord as we listen to our prophet, President Nelson, and do as much temple and family history work and gathering of Israel, more than we've ever done before, like he asked. The building up of Zion is a cause that has interested the people of God in every age. It is a theme upon which prophets, priests, and kings have dwelt with peculiar delight. Join us at Christian Fire Poppy as we explore captivating symbols, celestial signs, and earthly events to help remember gospel concepts. We draw upon compelling future dates for spiritual momentum and motivation and setting goals to build Zion and watch for his coming. So let's bloom despite the doom and gloom like a true fire poppy. A Zion field of many fire poppies will reduce erosion after world chaos fires. Join us for more fiery passion and preparedness as we fly into the second coming of Jesus Christ.